Hello, this is Michael O'Grady and welcome to another ActionScript 3 tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at animation using the Motion Tween, Classic Motion Tween and the Motion Editor. So let's make a new symbol. Make sure it's a graphic, the simplest that we can find. And I'll call it Blob. And I'll make a blob. It's going to be um, a primitive rectangle. Let's just unlink the corners. I'll make top right radius of 20, bottom left radius of 10. And we'll set the outside colour to be black and the fill a gradient green. Okay. I'll just change this to background. And we'll just have another layer, call this text. And on here we'll put some text. Just drag out over the entirety of the area. It's already centered, it's already bank gothic. Uh, the tracking and leading is a little bit strange. This is for the last time I used it, so let's change the color to white. Increase the size. Tracking is the gaps between uh, letters and leading is the distance between lines. So we'll just ease that out a little bit. Okay, that's reasonable. Just lift it up and there's our blob. It's looking more like something organized and less like a blob, but uh, that's okay. So I'm going to bring it on left stage, stage left, and animate it across to here, slow it down to there, and then speed it up to the right. So it's going to zoom on, slide across the center slowly, and then zoom off. And in a classic motion, we have to work out how many frames we're doing it over. You can extend this if you don't get enough, but I'm going to do it over 100 frames. So I'm going to right click and insert a keyframe. This is our end point. And I'm going to make sure that this whole tween is a classic tween. And then it goes dark blue with this arrowed line underneath. So on the last keyframe here, I want this object to be on the right hand side. So if I press shift and the right hand arrow it moves across 10 pixels at a time. Okay, So let's have a look at what we've got already. So it moves across at a constant speed. What I'm going to do now is speed it up till it gets on stage over 10 frames, just under half a second. Insert a keyframe. So the time is now cast in stone and I'm just moving it on stage to the point where I want it to travel to so now we've got two journeys, a fast one and then a slow one. So I'm going to do the same at the other end, 10 frames in, frame 90. And then I'm going to move the object left. So I've now got f three speed sections. OK, and of course the movie revolves around it, continuously loops. So I'll take that back to the beginning. And let's go to a new file. Let's have a look at uh, applying this now to more like a, a ball and applying gravity. I'm going to show you something called easing. So let's make a new symbol. Just call this ball. And I'm going to make um, an oval. I'm going to press shift and drag out a ball which has uh, no stroke. And then just down here we'll go for a, a gradient red. So I press shift and drag out a circle. And here we are. OK, I'll just centre that a bit more. Uh, I'll use the paint bucket tool just to click in various areas to get the centre of the shine. So that's uh, quite nice. And then go back to my scene. So I'm going to have the ball start at the top of the movie, off stage, and then it's going to animate down. OK, if I go to fitting window, 80%, no it's not letting me, uh, let's go to 50%, okay, we can see enough here. So I'm going to make the ball drop 
to the bottom of the frame in 30 frames. So insert a keyframe and create a, a classic tween. And at the frame 30, I'm going to drop the ball down using the arrows, the shift and the down arrow, to the bottom. And so a ball drops down from above the stage to the bottom. OK. So what I can do by clicking in here now and going to Properties, I can ease in or ease out. This is easing out is it slows down right at the end, or easing in, it slows it's slow at the start and it speeds up at the end. So it still has to cover the same distance in the same time, it just does it with a, a, a variable speed over the duration. So I'm going to have the ball bounce back up now. Um, so we came down in 30 frames, we'll go back up in 25 frames. And I'm going to insert another classic tween. And then at the end we're going to jump up, but obviously it's not going to go as high as the top of the frame. And then I'm going to uh, ease out. Um, so yes, we're easing out, so we're, we're rising to a stop point. Let's just test that. OK, that's reasonable. So we came down at 25 frames. I'm just going to move it over to the right and move the end point over to the right. So now it looks like the ball is moving in from the left and moving to the right. OK, so that's fairly nice. So it's going to come back down over 20 frames, insert a keyframe, insert the classic tween. And at frame 75, I'm going to move it over three and then actually make it disappear off stage. And I'm going to tween uh, ease in on that one. Now obviously to make it look um, more realistic I'd want to squash the ball as it hits the ground um, but that's okay for that. So now we're going to go to a new one and I'm going to show you the, the new motion editor which was released in um, CS3, CS4. So I'm going to make a new symbol. I'll call this one shape. And I'll have a, an oval for this. And I'm just going to tween it in from the left, across stage, and then to the right. So here it is in the library. Drag it off stage. And now we decide how long our animation is going to go on for. And we don't insert a keyframe right at the end. We just insert a frame. OK, so this is a difference now. We just insert a frame as opposed to a keyframe. and create a motion tween as opposed to the classic tween and it's a lighter blue okay now if we go back to the first one this is a dark blue with a, a line through it um, the motion editor is a lighter blue and there are no keyframes at the end so we don't manipulate it from the stage here you see we, we can't uh, alter the object what we have to do I'll just reduce this in size a little bit so we can see everything. What we have to do is go to the motion editor and we have some numbers here that we can click and drag. We can type numbers in or if we drag we get our uh, interactive view on the stage. So we're at frame 10 now. If I drag this along to the very end, uh, frame 100, I can then change the X, drag it right the way across off the stage to there and if I come back to frame 90 and then drag the X back to the left and already you can start to see that there's a series of dots some widely spaced some closely spaced uh, on the path here they're widely spaced so it's covering distance uh, either quickly or slowly okay so we've got the similar effect to what we had in the first movie using the classic tween. I can actually change the curvature of these lines. So if I go to the selection tool, um, I can, for example, uh, do a simple slow uh, easing. 
which tends not to be as controllable uh, or as visible um, as in the classic motion tween. So I struggle to to work with that one. Um, there's a rotation that you can change uh, about the z-axis, that's the axis coming straight out of the stage. But if I hover over these paths, I can get them to curve um, with Bezier, the equivalent of Bezier handles. Okay, so I can get the object to go along a path quite simply. Looking at the properties, um, if I select, let me see, I need to select the whole object, so I need to go back to the timeline, select the tween, I can click Orient to Path, and this is when the object stays tangential to the line as the line changes. Okay, so you might have a, a paper aeroplane being tangential to the path as it's flying through. So if we get rid of that, uh, if we want to rotate once or twice, let's say once, or once plus however many degrees, we can uh, go clockwise or counterclockwise, and then we're just rotating uh, however many times between the start and the finish.